We have, as a species, long suffered the results of a civilization with foundations for understandings built upon outdated belief systems, and a funded academic institution in which one is rewarded for repetition rather than that of pioneering a theory which could shine a light upon the oldest, most controversial corners of human civilization. Where did we come from? How old is human civilization? These are questions which we have not only witnessed being ignored by the majority of mainstream academia, but have also shown, through what we believe is overwhelming evidence to prove that this same entity, entrusted with the accurate account of human history, has not only concealed a reality which threatens many mainstream belief systems, but also the modern attested theory of evolution as a whole. Entire chapters of human history, and also, more than likely, entire branch of subspecies of giant humanoid remains removed from the history books, concealed within kilometers of hidden artifacts, hidden away, withheld from the masses, often in favor of profitable avenues, born out of stability of understandings which powerful institutions grown out of which, in turn, protect their own survival rather than that of the allowance of furthering the understandings of the common man. There is not only strong evidence still to be found all over the planet of past, highly advanced civilizations which displayed capabilities far beyond that of any civilization within the permitted timelines of investigations, but prove the tremendous age of some of these ancient ruins. These relics far from mere ruins, are in reality more accurately described as the fossilized remains of human activities that do not just stretch a few hundred thousand years into the ancient past, but due to the time needed to develop such features, are indicative of a civilization nearly or possibly over a million years in age. The great stones within the western wall, for example are not only far in excess of any weights the already studied permitted ancient ancestors within known history were capable of moving, or indeed using as building blocks, but fortunately this site still possesses ancient wooden stakes, presumably once used within the method of construction, which regardless of the fact that the method is still an enigma to modern understandings, the wood, in contrast to stone relics, can indicate an age as to when this foundation was undertaken, petrified, fossilized, now stone blocks of what was once wood, that are unquestionably of an incredible age, support our argument of this far-spanning, currently dismissed chapter of ancient human civilization, which, if embraced by mainstream science, would not only prove this past beyond doubt, but would in turn threaten many currently highly profitable and as such extremely powerful and in turn influential belief systems and the institutions which have grown up around them in regards to ancient human origins and development. Fossilized tree roots can also be found upon the megalithic blocks of Gornea Shoria. Many other sites, like that of the inexplicable ancient temples of Petra, in some of the less publicized areas of the site, display immense erosion regardless of the site's relatively sheltered location. It seems that many of these oldest of sites not only often lay below several feet of sediment, which due to the funded and as such same rhetoric within geological studies forbids said sites to even be recognized as that of the past work of intelligent man. Due to this immense age, any human remains that may have been left by these ancient builders would have long turned to dust or have been fossilized at the site. Concealed upon their discovery, or like any site which gains notoriety within mainstream media, secretly revisited and ransacked of any evidence of this incredible age. We believe that possibly the only remaining traces of these past ancestors can now only be found within the most obscure and curious of places, like that of the Altamura Man, for example. A rare fossil 
apparently of the genus Homo, discovered in 1993 in the karst sinkhole in the Lama Lunga cave near the city of Altamura within Italy, that thanks to its location and the near impossible feat it would be to remove him, has been left in situ for the world to see, and thanks to where he fortunately lay, has been slowly growing ever since his death. He is quite possibly of an immense age and died an incredibly long time ago, and has, instead of slowly decaying away, fading away like the world which he once lived within, has continued to be preserved in the calcite that has grown around him. Remarkably well preserved but embedded in stalagmites and covered in a thick layer of calcite, the find was left in situ in order to avoid damage. Research during the following 20 years has been based mainly upon documented on-site observations. Consequently, experts have conveniently remained reluctant to agree on a conclusive age, and have thus never arrived at a mainstream consensus on the species it belonged to. In a 2015 paper published in the Journal of Human Evolution, it was announced that the fossil was apparently a Neanderthal, and dating of the calcite has revealed that the bones are possibly older than 187,000 years old. How old is human civilization? Where do we come from? These questions persist, and as such, so do our endeavors of exposing the truth regarding the reality of these remarkable relics of a now forgotten history. Relics which we find highly compelling. Since the rediscovery of what is unquestionably the most puzzling, astounding, and enigmatic site on Earth, the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx of Giza, we have been led to believe that what could be described as an astonishingly accurate yet somewhat vandalistic later edition was once put there by a caliph named al mamun Now popularly known by its coined title, al mamuns Forced Entrance, this title, although argued as his work, has a pretty compelling tale attached to its possible original purpose. When one actually looks into what an incredible achievement this tunnel once was, it becomes apparent that it was cleverly bored by an ancient people, far more advanced than a 9th century caliph. Additionally, possible hypotheses have been put forth as to its origins by individuals who may have known of entrances into the pyramid we in the modern world have either lost knowledge of or have been prevented from knowing about their existence. Hinged doorways made of stone, perfectly counterbalanced to allow an average-sized man to open and close them. Doorways along the structure's north face that, when closed, become seemingly indistinguishable from its surroundings. Are there still secret entrances along the pyramid's northern side? Quote, the Great Pyramid a little way up on one side, has a stone that may be taken out, which being raised up, there is a sloping passage to the foundations." End quote. Written by Strabo in Pyramids and Temples of Giza, Flinders Petri. Yet regardless of these additional, highly compelling investigative leads put forward in addition to an explanation for the tunnel's existence, its remarkable accuracy remains a tough thing for supporters of academia's tale of events to explain. As author Ralph Ellis puts it, quote, The main problem with the classical explanation was that Mamun's tunnel is rather too accurate for comfort. It tracks into the pyramid in a direct line for the all-important junction between the descending and ascending passageways. It is often cited that Mamun had to turn the tunnel sharp left to discover the original passageways, a fact that Ralph had in the back of his mind when they first visited the Great Pyramid. But he ambled down the forced tunnel, rather mystified, because the left turn cited in the literature could not be found. Having backtracked the tunnel and to try again, that left turn seemed to be no more than a slight widening of the tunnel. In fact, the digging was almost right on target." End quote. For how does one know where one is when deep within the passages of such an incredibly huge ancient structure? Secondly, if instead argued as having been started from without, 
the same problem has to be solved. For how did one know how to create the initial angle? Although it is now the most used entrance and although it has been drawn upon countless plans, to draw an existing tunnel's precise line of descent is far more easier than to have created said precise angle in the first place. And within the Great Pyramid is the remaining half of what has often been used to create a compelling, possible explanation for this tunnel's original purpose. Known as the sarcophagus of Khufu, an anomalous object found within the pyramid, an artifact we have covered in the past. No one can explain how this giant stone object came to be within the pyramid. It would not have fit through the existing entrance tunnels. However, at some time in the pyramid's life, someone smashed into this stone box, took its past contents and the sarcophagi's lid, an object that would also have not fit round the turns of the existing tunnel system, yet would have fit through the force tunnel and due to the vandalistic nature of the tunnel itself, could be argued that this damage to the sarcophagi was inflicted by the same group of individuals who built the tunnel, one used to extract the so-called sarcophagus's lid. Is this the real past purpose of the tunnel? And if created by a caliph in the 9th century, how did he tunnel so accurately on target? And additionally, where is this lid now? Was this tunnel, like the many different layers of casing stones indicate, built by a later yet also lost civilization, one who flourished far before even the ancient Egyptians? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Many of the most astonishing feats of ancient engineering are often avoided by historians, with many historical research materials absent their existence, due to their unexplainable origins. The reason for this should be obvious, for when one gazes upon such relics, instantly struck with wonder. A curiosity as to how something of such incredible size or skill could have been created by the individuals these sites are often claimed as the work of. This is one of the main theses of the channel, for not only are these sites largely ignored and thus overlooked regardless of being historically important structures, clear yet suppressed evidence that a civilization far more capable than any currently recorded within permitted timelines once flourished on Earth. Relics with a very different origin and indeed history. We believe that such structures were instead rediscovered by the many academically claimed builders and this is often argued as being supported by empirical archaeological evidence. However, the archaeology merely proves inhabitation, not construction. With a record of construction never found within any of these academically claimed cultures surviving records, merely having re-inhabited such structures for strategic motivations, and in doing so, left their own archaeological footprint, subsequently concealing an unknown aspect of human history one which came to an abrupt end and one such site largely unknown by the greater world is known as the Herodium. What makes this structure so incredible is not the small arrangement of stone structures within the center of the build, but the earthwork itself, the entire site's footprint, and indeed the volume of earth utilized in the making of this ancient earthwork was of gigantic proportions. A seemingly pyramid-sized volume of earth used in the building of what can only be described as a respectably sized hill made by the hands of ancient man. Once one inspects this site from the air, its huge size becomes apparent, and the incredible feat this once was, an undertaking, if in fact constructed with primitive tools, would have been a task of unimaginable hardship. Thousands of tons of earth were at some point quarried and then transported to this spot, subsequently creating an incredible well-sheltered inhabitation with an intimidating incline on all sides. Many similar earthworks can be found throughout the United Kingdom, with the biggest pyramid in Europe known as Silbury Hill. Mysteriously made completely of chalk, yet this little mentioned site dwarfs Silbury Hill by some measure. The question is, how old is Herodium? Who made it? 
How did they accomplish such a feat? It is, undoubtedly, highly compelling. Something which has always puzzled us at Mystery History, although the mountains of pyramids, the gigantic megaliths, indestructible artifacts, or the out-of-place artifacts, is the massive amount of underground cities found all over our planet. Extraordinary undertakings, seemingly necessary at some time in the very distant past. Complex tunnel networks almost telepathically hewn direct to each other. Cut from hard bedrocks, with many exhibiting considerable efforts committed into security. Huge rolling doors can be found at many crucial junctions within the underground systems, as can be found, for example, amongst the underground cities of Cappadocia. Derinkuyi, in particular, still exhibits its rolling doors still in situ. No one displaying the builder's impressive capabilities, but also the abilities of the rolling stone operators, as whoever built these contraptions unarguably still possessed megalithic stone-moving knowledge. Knowledge, we hypothesize, is lost knowledge, due to the builders of said sites also a lost civilization, which instead of where they have been placed chronologically by funded investigations, actually, we believe, originate an unimaginably longer time ago, placed far within an antiquity not only lost, but actively dismissed. But regardless of the impressive feats these underground cities were to create, the question persists, why? Why go to so much effort? The cities of Uskanakt, Derinkuyu, and Kemakli, all found just within Cappadocia, Turkey, are not only some of the most complete underground dwellings, with Derinkuyu estimated to have once been capable of housing 20,000 people. Derinkuyu even connects to Kemakli via an underground tunnel an astonishing 8 kilometers long. And this is but a tiny fraction of the ancient underground cities, which have so far been found all over the world with more discovered each day. Many seem to have simply been sealed when no longer needed, thus many still lay undisturbed to this day. Derinkuyu, for example, was only rediscovered when a wall was knocked down in a house during renovation work all seemingly constructed around the same time, yet any definitive motivations for why ancient man decided upon such drastic efforts worldwide have yet to be substantiated. Their construction remains a complete mystery, a fact we find highly intriguing. Many people will argue that these cities were chiseled by slaves over many years and at great suffering, a safe bet narrative which jives with the mainstream. When it comes to the academically claimed ages, and due to the people during said ages substantially lacked any advanced stone-cutting technologies imperative for creating such vast works. This argument, however, thanks to the volumes of examples of exquisite, astounding feats discovered as a special few of these underground complexes, not only installed clearly to demonstrate an acoustic level of awareness on par with prodigal ability and possibly many other as yet undeciphered features displaying excelled understanding of many of life's most intriguing subjects. The Hypogeum, located within modern-day Malta, is but one of many examples which can be presented as proof that whoever built these underground layers at minimum possessed astonishing acoustic knowledge, far ahead of man, as well as almost physics-defying stone-moving techniques displayed in the structure itself. The Hypogeum possesses a characteristic designed into its construction, which is simply astonishing. It is so mystifying that although very little is known regarding how it was achieved, a certain frequency it can amplify which seems to stimulate the building's amplifying capabilities, as if the entire structure resonates and has since been shown to also affect the human brain becoming known as the God Frequency. Who built these underground labyrinths? Why? When did they build them? We find these incredible relics of a lost civilization highly compelling. Many people from around the world have now, fortunately, been presented with and hopefully convinced enough thanks to platforms such as YouTube, particularly Egyptian constructional revisionists, 
To now realize that there are many as yet unexplained feats of ancient engineering which literally drenches these magnificent structures and its equally mysterious sandstone plateau below. Yet we further expose many other indicative features which were seemingly impossible feats of ancient engineering which we hope has helped a lot of people to realize that there are many fallacies in historical doctrine, many gaps in academic and curricular understandings, many things dismissed with flaky strategies and theories which have again and again, thanks to modern computer engines, been proven as impossible maneuvers. It seems many people and a considerable amount of money goes into keeping a stranglehold over the pyramid's possible origins and original function, inevitably shrouding these structures in a veil of secrecy. In addition to the original pyramid blocks and the enormous megalithic exoskeleton visible in a few obscure areas of the pyramid's lower regions, we have also in the past put forward the hypothesis that due to the advanced nature of many of the pyramid's casing stones and the drastic differences in ages they appear to be, all made with the same type of rock, thus to display such drastically different levels of erosion, is undeniably evidence of them being installed at many different times. Yet although claimed as being built within known history, no documentation of the installation of the blocks, or indeed any explanation as to how these pyramids were built, all remain elusive. Several different styles were put upon these monuments, we feel, at vastly different times within antiquity. We posit that they are clear proofs of a number of past civilizations' conservation efforts, but due to these compelling and visible proofs, one has to consider that the Great Pyramid's origins are vastly more prehistoric than could ever be publicly accepted, and due to these features having seemingly survived due to what we suspect was a number of considerable efforts to shield them from the environment by a number of different, extremely ancient, yet all highly capable, yet now lost civilizations, which we have identified in previous work as that of the Cyclopean Civilization and the Polygonal Civilization. But I digress. Many of you who have donated towards the channel and to reserve a book may be wondering when the channel's accompanying books will be published. However, I assure you Mystery History intends to go in-depth regarding his and other findings surrounding not only the ancient pyramids, but also the many other compelling, seemingly impossible ancient legacies found throughout Giza's plateau and many museums, and many other controversial sleuth-gathered factors from throughout antiquity. Creating the type of evidence-driven, visually illustrated examinational content in which the books will be exclusively focused upon. All of these factors are reasons why the books will not be written hastily. As my knowledge grows, so does my understanding of what makes ancient ruins so enigmatic, and I believe the larger my research, the better the go-to guides will eventually be. I just wanted to reassure you that Mystery History has not forgotten about any of you. Returning to our opening statement, however, Many are now aware that there does not exist a valid explanation for the construction of the pyramids. Even if one had unlimited slaves, it is not a case of muscle, but rather a lack of space in which to utilize such. Yet what many who have not explored Giza and the surrounding connected ruins on foot are often oblivious of the astonishing array of ancient temples, clearly dating from the pyramid builders, not only lost for eons in the sand of the Sahara, but has preserved some in astonishing conditions. Ancient Egypt, its great pyramids, its eight-sided Cheops, its incredibly well-preserved, once long-engulfed temples, and the inexplicable stonework of ancient Egypt is but one of many areas from a world of ruins, which we not only intend to unravel as much as possible, but it is an investigational struggle which we find highly compelling. We recently covered the impressive ancient dwellings known as dolmens, which can be found littering most of the European countryside. Enormous ancient structures, which we feel were left by a surviving, less capable branch of an earlier civilization, still possessing advanced knowledge allowing them to build with such stones. 
Surviving remnants of the group, we also believe, were responsible for the masterfully constructed ancient ruins which can be found upon the same continents. Additionally, this era within human history was the inspiration for an animated TV show, namely the Flintstones. Curiously, the Flintstones, dubbed the Modern Stone Age Family, could easily be mistaken for a lost advanced civilization. Did the makers of the Flintstones know something we are currently unraveling regarding the builders of the Flintstones' homes, namely the dolmens? Or is it all a mere coincidence? Some of these dolmens still possess as yet unexplained evidence which flies in the face of academics worldwide. Sites such as the Dolmen of Menga, found near Malaga in Spain, this massive dolmen, one of the largest megalithic sites in Europe, is a prime example of the unexplained features which defy current explanation. The dolmen is 902 feet long, 20 feet wide, and 115 feet in height. It was built with 32 megaliths, the largest of which weighing over 200 tons. Nearby is another impressive dolmen, known as De Vera, discovered between 1903 and 1905 by brothers Antonio and Jose Vera of Antiquera. This site also possesses some of the most impressive megaliths to be found in any dolmens anywhere in Europe. Who built these incredible structures? How did they build them? La Roche Affi, in the French department of ille vilaine in the Brittany region, was named after a legend claiming that the stones were brought by fairies, this clearly inspired by their inexplicable nature. A name of fairy rock was given to many French dolmens or covered walkways. Regardless of whether our own theory is correct, the still surviving features of many of these ancient dolmens is clearly in direct contradiction with attested theory. Further alternative study is desperately needed of structures we find highly compelling.
We feel that the evidence to suggest a highly capable, technologically advanced, intercontinental, possibly interstellar civilization once flourished here on our planet is now irrefutable. The questions we now feel need answering do not now regard whether they existed, but surround their true origins, actual age, and indeed final destination. We would, of course, be the descendants of this past civilization. Yet the proof of global flooding, past cataclysm, and a technological reset occurring within human history, we would hope, is clear for all who peruse our channel to see. With such an event experienced by a civilization, once capable of lifting and building with unimaginably huge megaliths, one would presume that post-event one would encounter primitive dwellings, yet built partially with these now dwindling technologies, which would eventually become lost knowledge. We feel that, indeed, many ancient dwellings that can be found all over the planet, in particular the United Kingdom, currently claimed as Neolithic, are suitable candidates to support this supposition. Constructed with enormous, unexplained, mysteriously lifted megaliths, are these sites remnants of an advanced lost civilization? We hypothesize that the builders of such still retained limited knowledge and or technologies left from their now lost civilization, allowing them to create stable, immovable, yet primitively constructed dwellings, which we still cannot explain today. Furthermore, and the purpose for our video, the extremely ancient, little academically shared dwelling tucked away among a remote region of Russia. Located within the Caucasus Mountains, hundreds of similarly aged megalithic monuments, which the Russians call dolmens. Uncannily similar to the ancient trilithons found within the UK, however, it seems that these remaining remnants possibly of the same lost civilization, still possess something which allowed them to carve perfectly spherical holes through enormous megalithic stones. Just what were these ancient people using to create these ancient structures? Or indeed, the perfectly cut spherical doorways within? Who built the ancient dolmens that can be found dotting Russia? The ancient trilithons found dotting the United Kingdom? Are these structures, as we have suggested, remaining relics left by a civilization who had just experienced drastic cataclysm? If this is not the case, why do they possess characteristics indicative of lost knowledge, yet appear to be of such a primitive design? We find our hypothesis and the supporting evidence highly compelling. There are many places on our planet so remote or little mentioned that much of the world has never heard of said sites, and the Great Salbic Kurgan is one such example of an incredible ruin that has been largely forgotten, or overlooked by modern academic study. Clearly of a Neolithic age, the thing which is most striking regarding the ruin is the sheer size of the megalithic blocks which make up the main structure. Claimed by many as the most majestic and mysterious ancient monument of southern Siberia, the mound is located in what is locally known as the so-called Siberian Valley of the Kings, where several thousand years ago, it is claimed that there existed a kingdom, one made up of a people once known as the Tagars. Thus, the age monument has been pinned on said culprits, with an age of around 2,300 to 2,500 years attributed to the site. The main earthwork is a stone square mound, 70 meters by 70 meters in size, as mentioned, huge slabs of Devonian sandstone. Some estimated as weighing as much as 50 to 70 tons were somehow once inexplicably delivered to the site from a quarry site of over 100 kilometers away, found upon the banks of the Yenisei River. It is believed that it was an ancient temple, and at a later date an ancient astronomical observatory which like most other Neolithic sites incorporates processional cycles in its alignment, showing the movement of the sun and the moon. As mentioned, it still remains a complete mystery as to what devices were once utilized for the importation and installation of these gigantic stones. At the corners and sides of the stone fences are deeply driven large meniers. All 23 stones are of an enormous site, 
measuring up to a height of 6 meters, they're clearly smoking guns flying in the face of upheld academic fallacies. The rare excavations and explorations noted as having been undertaken at the site note that before the construction of the giant earth embankment and its accompanying stone fence, there was a crypt of logs in its place, once in the form of a truncated pyramid. This whole crypt can be found inside the huge earthwork, preserved beneath, untouched, yet covered with a thick layer of bark. The crypt had the height of 2.5 meters in depth of 2 meters of water covered the pit. It is claimed that around the burial zone, for a long time, a strong anomaly has continually been observed. The study of these phenomena has indeed been engaged by scholars, but the pace of said explorations has been suspiciously slow-paced. Who built the Great Salbic Kurgan? How were these huge stones transported to the site and once driven into the earth at the site? What is this quote, strong anomaly? More investigation and popularization of the site is desperately needed. It is a place which we find highly compelling. Thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care.